So, so what, it, what can we do right now? Because it's you're saying it's a turning point. 2011 yeah. is a turning point. What can we do in our life? What does it represent? Is there a choice for us to make right now? Is there some cleanup to do? What can we do to best move forward and embrace these changes that are happening? You know, uh, Lilu, that that's really a key question. And Papillon. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Papillon. <laughs> uh, what, what I found is that is that really comes from streams. In other words, what kind of streams are are each of us in? Mm -hmm. Some people can can change, can transform things by being in meditation constantly and changing the morphogenetic fields and shifting the dimensional fields. Uh, each of us has different talents. Each of us has different interests. But I think that mindfulness and awareness and being really informed of the facts mm -hmm. and, and opening oneself to the information. We're in an era where we're shifting from being a Gaia-centered race to being a universal and a multiversal centered race. You know, I have cases now, uh, if you, go, you can go up to Exopolitics and you'll see them and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm interviewing them. And you were the inspiration for me to start interviewing people on video, mm. uh, you know, and, and I, I watch your website and says, oh, wow, I should start doing that. And um, so I want to acknowledge that. And, and, um, but I've interviewed people, for, for example, in New Zealand, uh, this one person who's the head of the New Zealand UFO organization. And just to show you how our traditional concepts of the afterlife and extraterrestrials and what humans are are just very inadequate. Mm -hmm. She at the age of eight was taken it up into a ship of gray extraterrestrials where she met children and she was introduced to the soul of her future son and she played with the soul of her future son that was a ball of light. And you can go up to the article and the things and you'll see little drawings that, that she's made of she playing with a ball of light as an eight-year-old mm. child. Then later, after she was married, um, uh, and she was pregnant, she was taken back up into the craft and there was a merging operation where she was put on a gurney and the soul of the sun was brought in and there was a merging procedure where the soul of the sun was merged with the fetus. And she was downloaded a lot of information about the future destiny of the sun. He's now a 27 year old lawyer in New Zealand. He still doesn't have memories about being on the ship, but he's gonna acquire them in his 30s and he has a destiny to fulfill. Mm -hmm. That is in fact what's happening. People report going on ships and meeting their dead relatives, their grandmother and their grandfather, on the ships. Now, that's very much at odds with the traditional religious visions of heaven, the afterlife. You know, it used to be that only God and the priests would deal with your soul. Mm -hmm. And here you have gray extraterrestrials bringing you up introducing you to the future soul of your son and merging your, your soul, the, the soul with, with your son when you're pregnant. Mm -hmm. And that's in fact what is occurring. So our models are really primitive and, and they're stuck in these medieval or even before models that organizations that are primarily concerned about their political power the various churches, they're, 
Churches are really political organizations that are concerned with power and they use dogma, which they have from sacred texts, to keep it. But those sacred texts may or may not be scientifically accurate. But the humans still are bonded with those sacred texts, you know, be because of ancient beliefs mm -hmm. and superstitions. So our job as souls who are here to help in the liberation of the planet has got to be very precise. And, and uh, that's part of, I think, our job is to be very precise, to bring out very, uh, you know, very science-based uh, documents to involve ourselves with the body politic, to involve ourselves with departments of education. You know, right now you have a country like the United States where in many states they have fundamentalists in charge of these departments of education and they believe that extraterrestrials are demons. So imagine that. <laughs> mm -hmm. We have a situation of medievalism mm -hmm. or, or, you know, dark, from the dark ages. But, is, but, but are all extraterrestrial and intraterrestrial beings uh, positive? I mean, are no, they bringing no. good? Because little no. greys, were, weren't they yeah. qualified as, pe didn't they bring a lot of darkness here? Yeah. Um, or reptilians, David Icke speaks of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here, here is, yeah, let, here is, uh, there's a lot of confusion on that score. Mm -hmm. Let me, let, uh, let me uh, uh, describe what, what I understand to be part of what the, part of what the situation is, okay? And ignorance and rumors thrive in, in, situations of cover-up, you know, rumors and just thrive in kind of the, the situations that, that we have now. Um, it appears as though uh, a certain group of, of greys uh, have been abducting people from our planet for probably several centuries. And they've been abducting people from our planet, and this or may not, this or may or may not be totally correct because I don't have all the facts, but it's congruent with some of the in some of the information because they uh, their species is dying out because they use cloning, um, and they've been cloning from duplicates rather than from originals so they're the generating and they're now trying to make a mm -hmm. race of uh, hybrids from humans using humans and greys and the humans and greys are for the, the these hybrids are for the replenishment of their planet it's not to take over our planet okay and uh, uh, some of the analysts in the exopolitical field say that they're engaging in genetic farming in order to replace the human race here. That does not appear to be true. Okay. Um, there, as far as numbers are concerned, uh, there's just a, you know wildly speculation. Some people say, "Oh, it's a billion people that have been abducted." Some people say it's six million this is the roper pole other figures say that between 30 and 40,000 humans are abducted every year about 2 to 3% die during these abductions operations and there are about 30,000 humans in internment camps in in the gray planets mainly women who are serving as wombs right now. The US government and the Russian government and the UK government are completely aware of this. The US government serves more or less as the coordinator or subcontractor for the abductions 
on this planet. And the rule is that in return for advanced technology from the Greys, which gives the U.S. military power, and that's why the U.S. has been able to sustain its role as a superpower. And to give a couple of examples, for example, in 1996, there was a case of in Varginha, Brazil. Whenever an extraterrestrial, a gray extraterrestrial craft crashes, uh, the deal is that the U.S. will ensure that the gray ETs that survive are returned to the gray planet in return for extraterrestrial technology that's given. And in Brazil, the Brazilian government returned the five surviving extraterrestrials to the U.S. government that returned them to the Greys. The Greys gave advanced extraterrestrial technology to the U.S. and the U.S. gave terrestrial technology and money to the Brazilians. That's the kind of exopolitical exchange thing that's going on now. It's the greys and certain extraterrestrial races that, of the lower orders mm -hmm. that do not want extraterrestrial disclosure at this time because they're afraid that they have certain agendas and they're afraid that there'll be a human backlash against them. But those are not the agendas of the higher order extraterrestrial races. Now, there are contactees. Uh, w one of them I you know, wrote a, an introduction to, to, to his book, Jim Sparks. He has been a contactee of the Greys for 18 years. He's almost like a trustee, you know, like a trustee in a prison. Uh, when, when the humans are abducted, he's taken along and he sort of keeps the humans calm on the, on the ship. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So over, oh, over 18 years, he's developed an, an insider kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of relationship with, with them, and um, I, I wrote. He he talks about all, all of this in in his book, and I say, in my dedication of his book, I said, these are like the field notes of an interstellar anthropologist, i.e. if you're studying this field, you know, you really have to read this, you know, mm -hmm. to understand the full spectrum of what's occurring on the planet. And in one sector, in one part of the book, he had a meeting with three, a group of reptilians and greys. There were three or so reptilians and three or so greys. And uh, they said, look, we, we want you to take this message to the humans. And that is that we entered into agreements with the governments. And the governments were supposed to tell your population of our presence by a certain date. And we gave technology to them to help clean up the environment. And none of those things are happened. They, they, uh, did not get, have not used the technology to clean the environment. They have used it for war purposes. And they have not told the human population about our presence. And you know, at some point we're gonna do that. But we want you to tell the human population that. So we're dealing with very complex situations. Think of the UN intervention in the Balkans, in Bosnia how complex that was with the various re religions and ethnic groups and then all of the interests inside the UN, you know, the, the world bankers and all the people who wanted to, you know, have various of the globalist agendas and then the humanitarian agendas. Well, think of the Earth as kind of the Balkans of this sector of the galaxy. And that's kind of what we are and what we've become over time because we were set up as a huge, far-reaching experiment in Homo sapiens. You know, we're, we're operating at only 3% capacity. And 
and we've had so many interventions and wars here over time and so now we have the upper dimensionals the Pleiadians, the Alpha Centaurians, the Syrians, even the Greys, even the Bhutis Greys who are responsible for the abduction programs are part of the council and were part of the decision in January of 2010 to set aside the intervention if this scenario is true. I'm the one that's trying to bring all of this information forward and to provide the theoretical framework to say why it's true. So, uh, that, to me, that's a scenario of hope. You know, it's bringing all of these parties to the table. Mm -hmm. It's a magical universe, sure, but it happens, you know, exopolitics is like the politics of Earth, but super complicated. You have all of these civilizations who are from different dimensions, different backgrounds, different interests. Mm -hmm. Some of them are service to self. Some of them are service to others. Uh, and, they're, and we're like the jewel or one of the jewels in the crown. We had an incarnation of a son of God here. I mean, he came here because this is really a far out planet. And that's one of the reasons why I think we, the law of non-intervention was set aside. Uh, in other words, there are huge cosmic dramas happening here on Earth. We're very privileged to have been able to incarnate on this planet. But it's not simple and it's not magic. And it's, it, it, it's really quite, quite interesting but quite scientific and it's challenging for everybody's it takes everybody to the limits. You know, it, it just takes you beyond your limits. Everybody is going to be cha is challenged beyond their co comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think is true. We're all challenged beyond our comfort zone. For this rap rapid growth ahead. Yeah, yeah, it that's like it. like a rapid transformation. Yeah, that's it. And a new R planet emerging. Yeah, but over... 10 to 15 years. Uh -huh. I, I think that in 2025 is finally we have paradise on earth. But it's like the process of making sausage, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Between now and then. Awesome. Well, what an amazing conversation. I'm really interested too. There's a last little question I have on my mind about the role of internet in all this. Because it seems like the internet is playing quite a role in developing yeah. maybe new ways of exchanging information or even bringing our telepathic uh, level, uh, you know, our ways of communicating with each other yeah. maybe to a new level. Maybe yeah. it's helping our, our own transformation to not just exchanging information, but beyond that. Is it a technology that was brought from the ETs? Well, uh, I would say, you know, there, there's the ETs, but you see, the, the ETs are kind of out there and the interdimensionals are kind of in here. Are they and not down there in the center of the Earth? No, no. those are the intra-terrestrials. Intra, yes, yes, yes. And then there's an interdimensional. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> it's hard for us in the third dimension to explain it, but, this, but enveloping us all is the dimension, is the spiritual dimensions. And they're different from the Interdimensionals. Mm -hmm. to, I'm getting, yeah. I'm so so yeah saying. yeah. <laughs> so so we can have. There's our physical universe here, and there's parallel universes yes. that are just like you know mm -hmm. slightly different to ours, or who knows what they are. But enveloping all of that are spiritual dimensions, and the spiritual dimensions are creating all of the physical and parallel universes for their use, so they can incarnate into them. Hmm. So that's the, that's the dimensional ecology of the multiverse, which is functioning all of the time. The intra-terrestrials are part of the dimensional ecology of this planet. And they're, they're the, uh, you know, there's, um, some of them are cities. Well, uh, the physicist 
Nassim Haramein. I'm sure you've yes, yes. talked to him. Not yet. Oh, I'm definitely. In oh, okay, good. With, yeah. Yeah. Um, he he says that, for example, uh, the the interdimensional portal to our uh, to our galaxy is a singularity, and the the interdimensional portal to our solar system is the sun. So that if you go up on exopolitics.com, you'll see photographs of large UFO craft coming in through the sun. Mm. That's how large craft enter our solar system, yeah. is through the sun. So, and the, the singularities on a planet, the interdimensional portals on a planet, some of them are located around volcanoes. So that's why, say here, in the Cascades mountains, uh, Mount Rainier is where they saw the first UFOs in 1947, because they're interdimensional portals so that uh, civilizations in adjacent dimensions or universes can enter into our dimension through there. And there's Mount, um, Mount Adams here that we go down to every year. I'll be going down in September where we do intention experiments and the UFOs come down. Mm. These large UFOs, half a mile across, come and circle around us. And, and uh, uh, then down in Argentina, where I was a few months ago, Mount Uritorco, there's an extraterrestrial city underneath that. And they have a camera there which records two or three UFOs coming out a day. It mm. runs 24-7. So that there's the extraterrestrials under there, but then there's also the survivors of Atlantis and Lemuria, who are also in dimensions in the intraterrestrial, uh, in the intraterrestrial di the dimensions. So, you know, it's a very busy place. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see what I'm saying? You know, we're in a beehive of activity, uh -huh. but it's highly populated and it's highly organized. I mean, look, here in just Vancouver City or in Chicago, it's highly organized, right? I mean, you, you've got, you know, all sorts of rules, regulations, departments, police, uh, you know, that everything is but very organized. It sounded like the universe was much more free flow than we were. It is in the upper dimensional ways, and this gets back to, to your question. The internet is patterning us for what fifth and sixth dimensional existence will be like because they don't use technology. Mm -hmm. In other words, we use ourselves as, I mean, yeah. our beingness as yeah. so, a vehicle. So, or as yeah, a yeah. So now we're, we're used, it, 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 we're using the internet as teleportation almost. You know, I get on Skype and I <laughs> go to wh wh wherever it is, or we, you know, meet in cyberspace. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're creating this new cyberspace, you know, so. Uh, so, that's a technology where we're creating hyper dimensions, okay? So, we're patterning the ascension, right? This kind of patterning it. But as we move up in dimensions, uh, we won't need technology. In other words, we'll be able to travel interdimensionally without technology, and I can give you a story on that. Uh, Will Allen, who I've written a number of articles with and have his photographs, he photographs uh, interdimensional extraterrestrial UFOs that are landing on the Capitol, the U.S. Capitol now, and on U.S. senatorial office buildings now, and over the White House now. And he's directed to do that. They, 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 he, has a, he has an implant in him and they'll say, go out. And he worked on, for three administrations, on Air Force One 
for George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush, and William Clinton. He was an officer in Air Force One. And he's a, he's a photographer for stop movie studios, and you know, he really knows what he's doing. Well, he, he was doing a shoot in front of the Capitol on the, there's like a, a reflector pond in front, front of the US Capitol, mm -hmm. and he was photographing a gray extraterrestrial ship and there were some of the gray extraterrestrials that were swimming in the gray mall, in, in the reflector pond in the mall, and he, and he was photographing them. And at the end of the mall, a group of ancient Mayas in complete Maya costume suddenly materialized, okay? And the ancient Mayas can do time travel, but they didn't need equipment. Mm -hmm. That's why the Mayas develop their their eye, their their optical nerves, and their skulls in in a in in a certain way, was to be able to use their physical bodies to actually teleport themselves through the time space continuum. Mm -hmm. So. For some reason, those Mayans chose to teleport themselves to the U.S. Capitol in 2002 to converge with gray extraterrestrials that he was photographing. So that's how wonderful this universe is. But we don't need all this technology. Right now, we're using technology like the universe, uh, excuse me, like the internet, I believe, because it's a tool we're we're modeling our future selves mm -hmm. through this collective tool that would be kind of my sort of you know thought about that and I, i've talked to people who who were in darpa in the 80s at the at the early versions of because it, it was the internet was developed by darpa uh, out of the pentagon and they were in the early versions of the internet and they used to bring the internet printouts to the place I was staying in Washington. But uh, yeah, it's the, it's just a tool. Mm, for something amazing ahead. This is very exciting. Thank yeah. you for a wonderful time. So much information. Yeah. This conversation can go on for hours. Maybe hopefully we get to have the time to do this again. Good. Soon. <laughs> much love, my beautiful co-creators. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you want more information, there is this website that exopolitics.com or this book and the dimensions is coming up and a lot of documents and information out there. Many lectures that you do around the world. Thank you. So much juiciness. <laughs> Bye. dimensional fields. Uh, each of us has different talents. Each of us has different interests. But I think that mindfulness and awareness and being really informed of the facts mm -hmm. and, and opening oneself to the information. We're in an era where we're shifting from being a Gaia-centered race to being a universal and a multiversal centered race. You know, I have cases now, uh, if you, go, you can go up to exopolitics and you'll see them and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm interviewing them. And you were the inspiration for me to start interviewing people on video. Mm. Uh, you know, and, and I, I watch your website and says, oh, wow, I should start doing that. And um, so I wanna, Acknowledge that. 
And, and um, but I've interviewed people, for, for example, in New Zealand, uh, this one person who's the head of the New Zealand UFO organization. And just to show you how our traditional concepts of the afterlife and extraterrestrials and what humans are, are just very inadequate. Mm -hmm. She, at the age of eight, was taken it up into a ship of gray extraterrestrials where she met children and she was introduced to the soul of her future son. And she played with the soul of her future son that was a ball of light. And you can go up to the article and the things and you'll see little drawings that, that she's made of she playing with a ball of light as an eight-year-old mm. child. Then later, after she was married, um, uh, and she was pregnant, she was taken back up into the craft and there was a merging operation where she was put on a gurney and the soul of the sun was brought in and there was a merging procedure where the soul of the sun was merged with the fetus. And she was downloaded a lot of information about the future destiny of the sun. He's now a 27 year old lawyer in New Zealand. He still doesn't have memories about being on the ship, but he's gonna acquire them in his 30s and he has a destiny to fulfill. Mm -hmm. That is in fact what's happening. People report going on ships and meeting their dead relatives, their grandmother and their grandfather, on the ships. Now, that's very much at odds with the traditional religious visions of heaven, the afterlife. You know, it used to be that only God and the priests would deal with your soul. Mm -hmm. And here you have gray extraterrestrials bringing you up introducing you to the future soul of your son and merging your, your soul, the, the soul with, with your son when you're pregnant. Mm -hmm. And that's in fact what is occurring. So our models are really primitive and, and they're stuck in these medieval or even before models that organizations that are primarily concerned about their political power the various churches. They're, churches are really political organizations that are concerned with power and they use dogma, which they have from sacred texts, to keep it. But those sacred texts may or may not be scientifically accurate. But the humans still are bonded with those sacred texts, you know, be, because of ancient beliefs mm -hmm. and superstitions. So our job as souls who are So, so what, it, what can we do right now? Because you're saying it's a turning point. 2011 yeah. is a turning point. What can we do in our life? What does it represent? Is there a choice for us to make right now? Is there some cleanup to do? What can we do to best move forward and embrace these changes that are happening? You know, uh, Lilu, that, that's really a key question. And... Papillon. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Papillon. <laughs> uh, what, what I found is that, is that really comes from streams. In other words, what kind of streams are, are each of us in? Mm -hmm. Some people can, can change, can transform things by being in meditation constantly and changing the morphogenetic fields and shifting the 